Hey, hey, party people. If this is your first time with us for our Nona Kids service, then welcome. If you've been with us before, then welcome back. I'm Miss Erin, and I am currently the Assistant Children's Ministry Director here at Anona, and I'm so glad you're with us this week. And what a crazy week it's been, am I right? Who'd have thought our week would be disrupted by a crazy hurricane who couldn't decide which way it wanted to go? Well, unfortunately, that very storm and the hurricane and the fact that it came this way when nobody thought it would created closures in our area, which made us unable to film our usual kids' YouTube service this week. Don't worry. We still have an amazing service to share with you, thanks to the wonderful people at Orange who provide, who provide us with our curriculum, videos, and slides each week. But before we get to our awesome videos, let's talk about this month's Life App a little, shall we? So hold up. Let's review. What's a Life App? Well, simply put, a life app is a small piece of God's character that you carry inside of you. Because as we talked about a couple of months ago, we are all made in God's image. So far this year, we've talked about creativity, friendship, and integrity. This month's life app is gratitude, which is totally appropriate with Thanksgiving being right around the corner. So what's gratitude? Let's take a look at it together. Can you read this with me? Gratitude is letting others know that you see how they've helped you. Let's read it again. Gratitude is letting others know that you see how they've helped you. This month, we've practiced giving shout outs to people who have helped us and showing them our gratitude. This week, I challenge you to find one person each day to thank for something they've done for you. You know what? In today's Bible story, we're going to hear about a man who went out of his way to say thank you and a few others who didn't. But before we get into that, let's get into one of my favorite parts of service and open with some worship. We're going to open with a worship song and sing out our gratitude to God for all that he's done for us. We're going to start today with this month's Life App song called Let It Out. And once our worship song is over, we'll go right into our Bible story for the week. So sing and dance along as we get ready to hear this week's story. Let's share our own gratitude to God. is on my side you're always there when life's not fair kept me from trying to run and hide so i thought so i thought that i should let you know
songs you've given I Dan Ku Shu In. Dan Ku Shu In. Wow, German is our hard language. <laughs> Hi, I'm Erica. I'm learning how to say thank you in other languages because if I ever travel the globe, I still want to have gratitude. Gratitude is letting others know you see how they've helped you. But saying thank you is really hard as it turns out. For instance, in Armenia, if you were to open the door for me, I'd have to say, Kanorakalution, if I wanted you to know that I was grateful. <gasps> or, if you gave me a stick of gum in Mongolia, I'd have to say thank you by saying, Beyalarla. And then, if we were in Spain and you gave me directions to the biblioteca, <gasps> I'd have no choice but to say, Grace. E ooze. Gris gracias. Gras gracias! Oh, I actually know that one. <gasps> Nine times out of ten, it seems like we forget to show gratitude when we should. But as you'll see in today's story, saying thank you doesn't have to be that hard. <laughs> Even in Romania! Mall to a tech. Everybody! Yeah, that seemed right. Devon Shivab. The Bible. It's 66 books of history stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. And now for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Luke, chapter 17, verses 11 through 19. Outside the village on the border between Samaria and Galilee lived 10 lepers. We didn't know their name or their stories, but we did know at least one of them was a Samaritan, a group that Jewish people distrusted. Call that man Zach. Hi there. I'm sorry. Not allowed to shake your hand. Leprosy was a painful skin disease, and there was no doctors or medicines to treat it. But even worse than the sores were the loneliness. Lepers weren't allowed to be around anyone who were healthy, not even their own families. They had to keep more than a social distance. So if Zach had a wife or kids, probably hadn't seen them in years. Oh, my little boys, all grown up by now, I bet. The 10 lepers' lives seemed hopeless. All they can do was stand back and yell at anybody who passed by. Stay away! Don't come close. But we do need food. If you could just leave some under that willow tree by the creek, uh, we'd be grateful. Then, one day, news reached the lepers of travelers approaching along the border road. Big crowd. Here it's that Jesus fella. The teacher? They say he makes sick people well. You're a Samaritan. <laughs> Why would he care about you? Hey, you know, what have I got to lose? Zach hobbled toward the road, walking stick in hand. The other lepers straggled after them. They can see a crowd now, traveling along the road. People won't like us standing so close. I'm not throwing away my shot. Zach can see faces now. The crowd grouped around a man in the middle. The man had a strong face and kind eyes. Jesus, master, have pity on us. To the leper's surprise, Jesus stopped right in the middle of the road. 
Jesus! Pastor Jesus! Jesus! Over have here! Please! Us. Have please have Pastor. pity on us! The crowd around Jesus backed away, whispering. Jesus stood firm as Zach and the lepers dared to limp closer. Jesus! Master! Have pity on us! As the lepers neared, Jesus took a long, clear look. Everyone went silent. Zach could hardly breathe. Then Jesus smiled. Go, show yourselves to the priests. Zach gasped. The only way a leper could approach a priest was if that he confirmed that he had been healed. But as Zach glanced down, his heart sank. His knees and his feet were still shriveled and splotchy. His knees still ached. Oh. Jesus moved on and the crowd followed. The lepers stared at each other. Well, that happened. I don't get it. Well, we should go to the priests, like he told us. Uh, I guess it can't hurt. Any more than it already does. Limping, the lepers headed out across the field towards the town. They hesitated as they reached the creek. We'll have to wade across. Painfully, the man clambered down the bank. Zach's stick got caught in the twisted root of a willow tree. The stick went flying, and he tumbled to the ground. Ouch! Instinctively, he jumped to his feet. How'd you do that? Do what? Just jump up. Zach glanced down again. This time, his feet and his legs were strong and whole, skin clear and healthy. Look! My skin, it's clean. The other man glanced down at their own arms and legs and bodies. I'm all better, woohoo! The lepers laughed and danced till they cried, amazed at what Jesus had done. You gotta get to the priest. Race you. The lepers splashed across the creek, hurling towards the town. Zach stopped at the water's edge the others ran ahead. I'll get to see my boys again. But even as Zach imagined the joy that would come, a face flashed in his head. Jesus, he's healed me. He's the one who's made me whole. Turning back, Zach hurried toward the road. He ran fast, catching up to Jesus and the crowd as they reached the village. Jesus, Jesus. The crowd parted quickly as Zach headed straight for Jesus. Praise God, I'm well. Zach threw himself down on the dusty road at Jesus' feet. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Zach lifted his head. Dust mixed with tears of joy. Jesus smiled, but his eyes searched the road behind him. Weren't all 10 healed? Where are the other nine? As Zach shook his head, Jesus turned to the crowd. Didn't anyone else return to give praise to God except this outsider? Everyone was silent. It was clear that Zach was the only one. Jesus smiled down at him. Get up and go. Your faith has healed you. Zach leapt to his feet as he hurried to see the priest. He had delayed his chance to see his family by a short time, but it was worth it to see the man who had given him back his life. So, there were 10 guys healed by Jesus. All of them were probably really grateful, but only one of them took the time to actually say it out loud. I think sometimes we're kind of like the nine guys who didn't say anything. It's not that we're not grateful that mom made dinner and washed the dishes. We are grateful. We just assume mom knows that we're grateful. So we forget to say, Thank you. And we're definitely grateful when a teacher takes extra time to help us with schoolwork. We just, I don't know, don't feel comfortable telling her, thank you. And anytime we take a moment to think about all the things God has done for us, our hearts are probably overflowing with gratitude. But we don't actually tell him, thank you. You probably feel grateful all the time. To parents, to teachers, to friends, to God to the guy who bags your groceries. All you need to do is remind yourself to take two seconds to say the words, thank you. That's the one thing to remember today. Say thank you. Or if you prefer, you could say arigato. 
Maki Terim Terimaka Si. Thanks, everybody. See you next time. Wow. So what did you guys think about that story today? Let me ask you a couple questions. How many men in the story were sick? 10. That's right. And now how many men did Jesus heal? Yep. You're right again. All 10. But wait a minute. How many of them came back to say thank you? Just one? That's weird, right? Well, I don't know, but that's right, just one. You know what, Jesus healed 10 men who were suffering from a skin illness known as leprosy. You know, if you had this illness during the time Jesus was alive, no one would talk to you or even come near you. You were completely ignored by everyone. Talk about some serious social distancing, am I right? But not only did Jesus talk to them, he healed them of this illness. 
Now, you'd think everyone would come running back to Jesus with a spirit of gratitude, but only one out of the ten actually came back and said, thank you. Now, chances are the other nine guys were extremely grateful. After all, this meant they could go back to their families, back to their jobs, back to whatever was important to them. But you know what? Just feeling grateful doesn't let the person who helped you know how much they've helped you. Saying thank you is always a great way to let others know you see how much you appreciate them. You know, it's even a great thing to do with God. So let's take a minute and pray. Heavenly Father, you do so much for us day in and day out. No matter where we are, what we've done, or what's going on in our life, you are always with us and always loving us. For that, we simply want to say thank you. In your son's name we pray. Amen. You know, guys, one of the best and simplest ways to show gratitude to another person is by using two little words. And that's why our bottom line today is say thank you. Come on, let's read it out loud together. Shout it out. Say thank you. Right. You know, saying thank you is so easy that it's hard to believe that only one of the men in today's story took the time to go back and thank Jesus. I wonder why that is. Well, you know what? Maybe they were in too much of a hurry. Maybe they figured that Jesus already knew they'd be thankful. But it's not always enough for us to just feel gratitude. We need to say it. We need to let people know that we're thankful. You know what it's like. You're in the middle of something. You're busy. You get distracted. Raise your hand if an adult has ever had to remind you to say thank you. That's right. Me too. Yep. Of course. And they're absolutely right. We need to say it. We need to be like the man who actually came back to thank Jesus. We need to always remember to make the wise choice and take time to thank people who've helped us. It's simple, guys. Just say thank you. Take time to say thanks. Don't keep it inside. Don't be in such a hurry that you forget to thank the people who are always there for you. And while you're in a thankful mood, thank your parents. Thank your teachers. Thank your friends. Say thank you to the important adults in your life. Just remember to say thanks. You know what? Thank you all for being here to share this week's service with us. We would love to see your faces on our live interactive Zoom service on Sunday mornings. If you'd like to get to link the link for the Sunday Zoom services, or you just want to be kept up to date on things happening here at Anona Kids, please send an email to our new director of children's ministry at bonnie at anona.com. We also have some really fun stuff planned for Advent, which begins in just two weeks, believe it or not. So come back here next week for details and have a great week, everyone. And don't forget to say thank you.